was kind of watching it from a distance, and it was really, I think, well done. And so I want you to know, I'm, I'm, once again, I think this Board of Education is visionary. It goes forward. It sees things well ahead and acts in the best interest of, the, of in this case, your teachers and staff. So I wanted to say that first. Second one is, I do want to say that this has been a, a county commissioner initiative. And I think that's, that's a huge thing for the county commissioners to stand up and say, some would argue this is only going to benefit the city in some levels. But you all have said this county goes as the city goes. Uh, you stood up in your, your state of the county address. You said this is important for our community. Really, I'm going to tell you it's a model for what we're seeing in the state. And the county commissioners said we're going we're to create something that's, that's really a unique. And I think Commissioner Barr can tell you that the statewide people are really paying attention to what you all are going to talk about today and what we're talking about in general. And the idea that, that we're going to come together with the county commissioners leading it, we're going to come downtown, we're going to do some very unique things uh, with the Maryland Theater, with USM, with the Board of Education, uh, with the Maryland Symphony, with tourism. We're, we're really bringing it together. And, and it's amazing because it's a really a combination. If you look at what we're going to ask of the state, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about, uh, but what we're coming together with, with private individuals, private businesses, private individuals stepping up with donations and in-kind is amazing. There's nothing like this happening in the state. And I'm going to tell you, that's why we're seeing a lot of attention. I've been amazed as I've gone down state now, that's the first question they ask. And I think you'll say the same thing, any of the state level people. So uh, I want you to know, uh, I want to speak first from the state level. We have had representatives uh, from the governor's office here, the chief of staff was in Hagerstown specifically to see. He had not seen Barbara Ingram before, and he was very excited to see that, be able to understand what's going on. I have personally had meetings with the governor and his staff. They're very excited about this. They're very supportive of this. Now, there's processes that we have to work through. We're only in session for a certain period of time. So uh, that's coming. Uh, we're going to come to you all, uh, specifically the county commissioners and the board, to say. But people are working. I've had meetings with uh, the president's staff. Uh, Delegate Wilson and I met with the Speaker of the House. They all have been very, very enthusiastic. They all have looked at this as creative. Once again, Barbara Ingram is a one of a kind. I did not know that. Dr. Wilcox and I are on the school construction panel. Uh, that's the only project like that that's a true uh, public-private partnership. And uh, it is, when the Knott Commission is looking at this, it's very innovative and they're very, very interested in it because we realize School construction in this state has a total budget of $300 million a year. Okay. Think about that. That's really about all we can afford right now in our constraints. And you've got Frederick High School going to take up about a third of that in one year. We cannot continue to do that when you look at the demands across the state. So innovation, like the county commissioners are talking about and working with the Board of Education, is amazing. It's needed. And it's the only way we're going to be able to move forward. So I want to, once again, applaud both of you that you have come back. You've come together previously and said this is a program that we uh, think works. The synergy between the Maryland Theater, the synergy between the USMH project is very, very powerful. And not only are we going to have facilities that coordinate, but we're going to have an educational opportunities. Because one of the major things we're facing in this country right now is student debt. And it is, could be the next tsunami. We, Obviously, in 2007, 2008, we had the problem with the housing problem. Student debt, in some respects, dwarfs that problem. And if we don't get this under control soon, it's going to be a problem. And that you now have a middle college relationship with Hagerstown Community College, that you now are going to have a relationship with USM and have students be able to walk through the whole process. And we're talking about a nurse practitioner and a physician assistant. We can have someone go K-12 in this community go right through the community college, go right through USM, and finish out and be a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant and stay right here. That's huge. That's where, under these county commissioners and your partnership, we're setting the tone that is amazing, and it's really addressing the dire consequences that we need. One of the things we're trying to do with the nurse practitioner is a psychiatric specialty. My heart breaks when we see the opioid crisis, when we see Brooklyn turning away 1,200 emergency admissions a year, and a lot of it is they don't have the caregivers to take care of people. This shows that, that this Board of Education, these county commissioners, have a heart for their community. They're reaching out in ways that there are the synergies, once again. It's not just about educating a community. It's addressing the needs that we have. And I want to I specifically talk 
Greg Murray has done a great job. I, want, I appreciate so much of what, what you all have done, but Greg has really led this. And that lady over there married to him, and her financial acumen with his leadership has really taken us a long way. And I want to thank Debbie as well for this, because you guys have done a great job. So the thing that I'm going to commit to you is I'm going to do everything I can to get every kind of commitment you, I can to you. At this point, what I'm going to ask you, what the next step that we see is we need to try to start working towards an agreement between you and USMH. And I know Mark Halsey is here, and I appreciate him. Uh, it's got to be something that, that Mr. Trotta, on behalf of you all, looks at and addresses their people and then come to you all to make sure you're completely comfortable. The idea that we wouldn't, it doesn't make any sense to build labs in two different places. The idea that USM can build one that will at some point have higher uh, capacity than what you would need, higher facilities for what they're going to do, that, that we're going to use that from 8 o'clock to 4.30 possibly for you all, and then they're going to use it in the evening, is amazing. It, it just made so much sense. The idea that UMES is going to come with, with a, you know, a hospitality and that that can relieve some of the stress for you all for feeding the students that are going to be there. We'll have to see how that logistics work out. But that it was going to sit there all week unused when, when we can free up space for you all. This is just amazing. The efficiencies and synergies are so powerful. So that's the next thing, this next step. Understand that the private developers have already expended a lot of money on planning and design work. They've already started some deconstruction. And that's with us having to say, we're getting there. We're committed to this, but we have to work details out. And that's why we see this really coming forward. So that understanding, the USM board, uh, Patrick Hogan, he is the brother of the governor, is our legislative liaison for USM. He said, we're excited about what we're, ha what we're doing in Hagerstown. He said, we really would like to work with the Board of Education. We can get that, you know, an MOU that will head towards a lease that works for them, works for us, then we're really all in committed. Because <coughs> keep in mind, they're committing to that program before it's, it's ready. So they're trying to provide space to you all for the labs that will be well in advance of when they're ready for their program. It's coming, and they're committed to it, but they're willing to accommodate and work with us, and that's why I'm excited, because I think, once again, it's, it, it, what it shows for leadership for this Board of Education uh, and, and really to work off of their funds um, is very powerful. Now, I'm on the Budget and Tax Education Committee. That, that's why I'm here. This is a shared vision of the delegation to support and work with you all. Brett Wilson, because he represents the city, has been intimately involved. In fact, he's even today downstate talking to analysts. We have had top analysts from the state up here as well. I'm amazed. They all know the Schmanker Stubo. Uh, <laughs> they know Barbara Ingram. Uh, and, and, you know, they, they know the outlets. Uh, we got to get them to know the rest of our community. But it's interesting that I'm amazed at who I talk to. They know what's going on. They are really very interested, and uh, they're very supportive. Uh, now, that's all good. Uh, as uh, Mr. Reidenauer said, that's good. Now we've got to see the money. And so uh, we're committed. Uh, we, we have run the numbers with them. We've talked to the fiscal and financial people. So I think that's the issue. As I can get, you know, those commitments firm, which, I mean, I've been looked in the eye by senior top pop people saying, we're with you, we're on this, just the workout. Okay, so it's a function of having to go into session with that. So once again, I want to say to the county commissioners, thank you for your leadership. Uh, it, it's something that, that, that really took vision. Uh, it, it took uh, some uh, fortitude to put it out there. Uh, but following your leadership, uh, I'm excited to come in behind and support that. I think the Board of Education seeing the opportunity here too, I'm, I'm very encouraged. and. Uh, excited to, to really bring this together. I think it's going to be a model for the rest of the state. We will have things we have to work out. There's no doubt about that. But we must go to Annapolis with one voice. Uh, as as, as uh, Ms. Brightman knows, this, this next round of Thornton funding coming is concerning to us, is very concerning to us. And when we can show that we can work together, that we can do unique things in our community, I think that's very powerful, and I think that's going to be the thing that we're going to have to be vigilant on. Because, I mean, as you saw the formulas for uh, road construction come out, it didn't look so good, right? We're going to fight that. We think we're going to get past that. But I'm, I'm worried the same type of things happens when we start talking about pupil funding. And so this is for us to say we're efficient with what we receive, we're innovative in how we do it, and we're collaborative. 
because that whole MOU, uh, the whole maintenance of effort, excuse me, maintenance of effort, has caused a lot of friction between county commissioners and boards of education across our state. That you are sitting here at this table working together says that we get it, we're committed in this community to work together. Doesn't mean we won't have some differences and some things to work out. And I'm here to say I'm committed to work with you as we go through that. I know that was longer than you probably wanted. I apologize. But I, I, um, I just feel very strongly and passionately, and I'm so excited to be so proud of what we're doing in our community. And I want to thank all of you sitting at this table for your efforts in that. Thank you, thank you for the positive Senator, comments. Uh, would you entertain questions, possibly, or would you prefer not to? President Baker, would that be all right? Fine with me, if it's okay with him. If you ask me a short answer, a uh, short question, you get a long answer, so I'll try to do better. And you always get back to them. <laughs> That's right. More of a comment than a question. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, thank you the, for the eloquent way that you explained this project and making sure that this partnership is a team. I can go to Hancock and tell that set of parents up there that they can send their grandson, daughter, son, whatever, to the University of Maryland for a four-year degree save them thousands and thousands of dollars in debt. That's what it's in for people in Western County. And the same type of explanation for Cascade and South County, that by building this project, there is a benefit to all in this county. And to allow our tax base to depreciate the county revenues in Washington County go down in the city, we'll have to go elsewhere because we still have the detention center, police officers, fire rescue, and roads to repair and education. So building up our downtown with this project, with this project that we're um, talking about, the urban improvement fund program, is going to be a way that all people in Washington County can benefit. And I thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any, any other, other questions, any other comments? questions, comments from the board members? I, could I just possibly, and I don't want to put you on in a tough situation here, but do you, could you kind of give us a rough idea of what you see the financial timeline might be from the state perspective? I think we're all looking at a chicken and egg situation here, which may make some people uncomfortable, and it may be helpful for them to have a sense of how that process looks right. to you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so uh, unfortunately, Dr. Lever is leaving, but he did come up, he looked at the project, he said, should be no problem for the state to commit to you know, as much as $5 million, and that was just a very easy, and that's kind of what we're asking for. Whether we have to split fund this and get some one year and the next, the goal, I believe, is to go to street for bids, um, and uh, that would mean construction uh, would start within months after that. Is that a fair statement? Uh, yeah, uh, Commissioner Myers. So, uh, you know, it's, but it's going you know, to take some time. We have them saying this fits within the program, whether I can get, uh, we actually, um, the governor puts out supplemental budgets. He did three last year. We tried real hard to get into the third one. We were close, but we didn't have this quite fully out, and it wasn't ready. So uh, whether it will come directly through Board of Public Works, whether it will go through the capital budget, we would expect when we come out of Annapolis next April that this will be done. We'll know well in advance of that, but as the budgets come out. That's why the governor has to put it in. That's where we are right now. We've had conversations with his budget people. We've had uh, conversations with his people. We see that as part of the budget, not a problem. But that's why Delegate Wilson's talking to analysts with appropriations. By the way, the Appropriations Committee is coming to Washington County September 13th, I believe, and specifically to talk about this. Uh, budget and tax, we're going to get either the subcommittee or the full committee up here as well. They want to see this project. So the, 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 the deal is the governor puts it in the budget. Uh, it has to go through the House and the Senate. That's why we spoke with the Speaker. That's why we're speaking with the President's office. Uh, and then it would be voted upon at that time. Uh, some of it will come right through the Board of Public Works, we think. And so that, once again, would be a way. So we have multiple avenues to get, uh, but we have the commitment. Um, I can only say that, that uh, the governor looked right at me and he said, Senator, we want to help Washington County. We want to do this. It's just a function of working out the details. But we would say we should have... We'll see it in the budget. That won't come till January, but we'll know it's in there within a month or so because they're already started on that. Uh, we'll know it's in. Uh, we will know that it's presented, uh, and then we'll work through the legislative process. We may need your help downstate, but that's why we have them coming out to us right now so that they can see it, understand it, 
uh, and it should be a pretty smooth project. I know our legislative response team is going to be meeting shortly, and we have a work session on our initiatives, so this is a conversation we could have then as well. And it would be helpful if, as you guys are comfortable, specifically the board, that we can start working with uh, Mr. Halsey and USM towards that MOU once again. Everything handled for you because then that starts the budgeting process for um, USM, the regions. And, and going back to what Commissioner Klein said, you know, that from, from the top down, they're trying to create affordability. They see this as a way to do it. They have money. I don't know how to say it. They have money. So we, we're, we're going to get them in quick, right? We want to get them committed, and I think that's what that will do. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments for Senator Serafini? Uh, Mr. Murray, do you want to <coughs> offer some timelines for the county, uh, some recommendations, some things that we need, uh, things that we hope to be moving forward on soon? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, certainly, uh, as an overview, uh, that's certainly uh, the information that you've, you've just heard just adds to the level of excitement of what this project can do for our community, what it can do for the students in Washington County, what it can do for our tax base, what it can do for many facets of the operations of Washington County. Um, I'll go into a little more detail on some of the meetings we've had recently and update on some of the more uh, operational and mundane details and what we need to uh, continue to move forward. Uh, we do have some of the handouts that we had before that uh, we'll just pass around again so everyone has one in front of them just because we have extra copies and it has pretty pictures. So that's something good we can look at. But um, we have had several meetings, uh, everything from uh, the theater architect to the um, architect that had previously worked with Mr. Bowman at the school uh, board construction project. Uh, we've had uh, joint meetings of the architects. We've talked to the developer uh, that is doing the USM renovation and is handling uh, part of the uh, spanning between the two educational facilities for secure access. Uh, we've talked about the plaza to the rear of the facility, which uh, the plaza is one of the concepts that uh, can really support the city of Hagerstown and a lot of the goals that they've established. Uh, knowing that they have some designs on their central parking lot for office buildings and other uses that would prevent that from being a real entertainment space. And the plaza itself could certainly be a space that uh, would allow for things like the Blues Fest and street fairs and uh, vendors and uh, different venues that are currently held in other areas to be right in the plaza to the rear of the theater. Uh, there's been a concept that the rear of the theater could have a movable partition wall that when you drop the curtain on the front of the stage and open the theater to the rear that you could have interior bands that are playing out to the plaza uh, for different venues which would you know be an incredible thing and uh, when that's of course not happening there could be uh, outdoor movies on the rear wall of the theater in the plaza uh, that's intended to be structured for pedestrian movement uh, to take advantage of the uh, multifaceted parking facilities in Hagerstown so that it will guide pedestrian traffic uh, as you would want in an urban improvement project through uh, the shops and retail spaces while allowing anchor institutions to have easy access and ample parking so that they can uh, perform the, uh, the functions that they're charged with. So with that, uh, where we stand is the theater itself as an architect under contract. The, um, the goal is that by next July, when the next budget's implemented, that uh, monies would be available not only from the state, but the local monies that are currently available that can be used uh, so that uh, design would be complete and could hit the street so that by the end of 2017, when USM is essentially completing their construction and has facilities available in their first uh, phases at the end of uh, next calendar year, uh, that the other projects would be able to start. Uh, we have demolition that will occur, obviously, between the theater and Barbara Ingram. That whole building needs to come down. The front of the theater where the box office currently stands, that needs to come down. Uh, so in conjunction and by staging in between and in th at the rear of those facilities, obviously, the coordinated effort will save time, money, and uh, maximize efficiency while minimizing disruption to the downtown core. Uh, that's all being considered in design. Uh, the uh, building that would be used for 
the expansion of uh, the Board of Education facilities uh, that would be between the theater and Barbara Ingram. Uh, there's discussion uh, between architects on uh, potentially how there could be uh, joint use uh, facilities that would help offset costs and maximize space, uh, such as where do you put dumpsters to the rear? And if the theater needs dumpsters and the school board needs dumpsters, you don't need two set of them. You could you know, potentially have one set. Uh, dressing rooms, areas where the two facilities interconnect, uh, space that would be available for uh, overflow, whether it's instructional space, performance areas, uh, one area that mimics the stage of Maryland Theater so that instead of using the stage every day, you can use a very similar performance space, do the same routines, and free up that stage now for additional performance uh, venues that uh, may come in during the day and other times when the stage is currently used. So it can maximize revenues then with the uh, construction of those facilities. So a lot of these details are currently being wor worked out between architects, uh, University System of Maryland. Obviously, uh, you saw an article in today's paper that uh, someone, who was it, Arthur said? Someone. <laughs> that uh, talked about the developers proceeding and uh, what they're doing with their hospitality areas and then uh, which subsequently will uh, be laboratory space also. Um, so that space is being uh, considered tied together the plaza, of course, is, is now under design, uh, under theater and developer architectural uh, work. The theater program is intended to be uh, completed by uh, next June and ready to hit the street next July, uh, which brings it back to the architecture for the uh, school board component and the uh, MOUs that would tie that together and allow the project to move forward with uh, USMH. Uh, obviously, uh, the county has dedicated a portion of money in the capital budget towards uh, this project. I know uh, the school board has had discussions on uh, monies to be dedicated to the project and where that may go. And obviously, uh, between the theater, school board, uh, county commissioner, city of Hagerstown, state, et cetera, there's total project funding that is ultimately available, even if uh, some of that needs to be a little bit uh, forward funding until we get to the subsequent. Uh, fiscal year, that's certainly uh, a doable task. So when we look at um, the current needs to make the sure this project continues to move, I think uh, one of the driving factors is uh, USM and subsequently USMH. I believe the, the board there in their October meeting is uh, intending on discussing some of the issues with uh, Hagerstown and approving some things that allow everything to move forward. Uh, in order to engage in that conversation and subsequent approvals, they need to know that they have a partnership, not only uh, with the ones that were named, but specifically with use of the, the uh, structures by the Board of Education. Uh, USM, of course, it's incumbent upon them to come up with a, a, memoranda, a, a memorandum of understanding uh, that has the acceptable tenants that uh, are necessary for the school board to engage in execution of that memorandum of understanding. I believe uh, that uh, University System of Maryland uh, now has that MOU ready, and uh, it has to go, of course, through legal review before it can be reviewed by uh, your board, uh, USMH further, the state, uh, county, just as uh, seeing what's in the MOU, et cetera. But uh, that is, I believe, uh, as of today, available for legal review at the USMH level and will very soon be available so that uh, you can engage in conversation on that MOU. And I believe what uh, the county is looking for and USMH is looking for and the need to move forward with the whole program is for the Board of Ed to uh, commit to an MOU that says, not the detail of it, but the commitment that says uh, that as part of this project, we're going to sign an MOU with University System of Maryland, given that the parameters in that MOU are acceptable to the Board of Education. But uh, knowing that the Board of Education understands that that MOU is uh, out there now and is going to be coming to you fairly quickly, and that in order for the project to proceed, that there has to be an acknowledgment that an MOU is going to be uh, reviewed and given the proper tenants in the MOU that are necessary for the Board of Education to feel comfortable with that, that uh, there will be an MOU that is signed and moved forward will give the University System of Maryland Regents the ability to continue to proceed with the downtown project, will give the developers the, the ability to proceed with the downtown project, and it also does something else very importantly. When we talk about when state funding will be available and what's going to be needed so that we can move this project forward, obviously, uh, whether it's the Maryland Theater or county government or anyone else, there's an element of uh, a critical path 
that is necessary so that when we get to next July that we have design complete so that when that funding is available that uh, we can move forward quickly, hit the streets and make that happen. Uh, obviously the theater is on that track um, and as uh, President Brightman said, you know, that's almost a chicken and egg type thing. Uh, if you wait until state funding becomes available to start, then we're already a year, a year and a half further down the road. And uh, that, of course, does not work well with the availability of uh, the other projects and the funding. Um, so we, especially uh, from a theater level, and is what uh, we've discussed for Board of Education, are moving forward quickly with uh, monies that are currently available so that we have a design uh, that's complete and ready to go when the other funding is available. Uh, we have the county money, the money that, uh, of course, commitment uh, to an MOU and the project by the Board of Education uh, that is available. We have those monies available that can begin to be spent, knowing that everyone's on the same page, everyone's committed to uh, the project scope, and we're moving forward to make this project happen. We can use those monies to make sure that the developer has the necessary resources to uh, continue to engage the architect, and the architect that's now engaged with the theater to maximize the spaces between the two facilities that's engaged with the developers for USM to make sure that all the details and the components are worked out uh, so that things can proceed as necessary. Those monies are available that we can start using as was intended when they were um, restricted for those purposes to make this project happen. When the uh, state money comes in next year, at least the first phase of it, if not all of it, uh, of course, we'd like to see a parking deck in there, too, so that helps facilitate all the goals we've talked about. That may not happen right away, but <laughs> there's certainly other options for parking in that, that vicinity. Uh, when that comes in, then uh, we're, all, we're ready to spend that money also because we know the project started. If we start uh, the beginning of 2018 or end of 2017 on a major project like that, we'll be into the next fiscal year already before uh, we need to spend the remainder of those funds that the state would be allocating. So uh, things are moving quite smoothly and nicely currently. Uh, when the architects uh, begin talking and the ideas started flying between them and you get the developers in the room talking about what uh, can possibly be along with uh, the state and the other players that are there, um, you can see that the synergy that this creates and the ability to move forward quickly and efficiently is certainly in line with what we've anticipated. Uh, obviously the county, as uh, the senator said, is. Uh, supporting this project heavily, but the only reason that we could do that is because you know, the city of Hagerstown had goals that they had set based on their uh, urban plan. The school board had a plan that said this is instructional space that we can use and tie in in the downtown core so that we have the benefit of uh, options for the students and the way that ties in with the, the different uh, parameters that you've already identified as very important with the original concepts. If that was not there, we wouldn't be able to move forward with this at all. It's not something the county can do uh, on its own, obviously, or unilaterally. It's the hard work that's been done already by the Board of Education, uh, the work that the city of Hagerstown did, the support that we're getting at the state level because of simply because of the synergy that this creates and how what uh, a model this could be for the rest of the state. And you know, regardless of what it takes, that model and that synergy is what's making these projects happen. And without it, nothing happens. So better to have a nice uh, unified project with cooperative efforts and not be able to get funding for any of the projects. And certainly we've been very fortunate through the work that's already been done, uh, everything they've already seen and heard from the Board of Education, from Dr. Wilcox, what he's done to support this project. I and mean, even in the, the first concepts through now, uh, without that, this project wouldn't be moving forward at all. Uh, City of Hagerstown certainly with uh, the goals that they've identified and how this supports that and the return on investment that we can see from an increase in tax base and jobs from just this project alone that was identified by their urban partners plan uh, is certainly something that we've looked at uh, when we look at the return on investment for funding that's provided. Uh, State of Maryland, I mean the leadership there and, and the uh, funding and support for the project uh, in combination with the rest as well as not only private developers but uh, things like the Maryland Symphony Orchestra that right now of course the Maryland Theater is their home. They would love to have permanent rehearsal space permanent places to put all the instruments that they use, things that uh, would involve freight elevators and logistics that currently don't exist, but this project takes care of all of that. Uh, we have uh, not only an urban educational campus with a large, uh, very useful plaza in the center, but we have an urban improvement project that turns a Maryland theater into an arts and entertainment complex. Uh, there are structures adjacent to the theater on the other side that uh, haven't even been 
uh, addressed yet except for some architectural concepts of how they could be used. It allows uh, Maryland Symphony offices, it allows restoration of uh, historic ballrooms, it allows many other facets when we talk about the visitor center, convention and visitor center engagement, uh, things that could happen that haven't even been conceived as original part of the urban improvement project. Uh, there's real estate downtown that people are starting to look at in anticipation of the uh, opportunity for <coughs> activity in the downtown core. There's uh, restaurants. There's uh, so many facets that people are now starting to, to have a buzz about because they know this is happening. So we want to continue to move forward very positively, very quickly. Uh, we have uh, obviously the plan that uh, we have uh, thought out in detail and continue to meet on. Uh, the architects are well engaged now uh, from all facets. Uh, we know that uh, there's funding available from the county and the funding that the Board of Ed has discussed. We know that the State of Maryland uh, has a commitment to make this funding happen, uh, although we have to go through the process to ensure that. Uh, we know the City of Hagerstown has been engaged uh, at some level to support the project. Uh, so now the next steps that uh, we anticipate are uh, continuing with the architectural work, uh, having the MOU vetted uh, through the proper channels that is now or now ready from USMH, uh, but has to go through, of course, the process before it can be uh, distributed so that we can review and see exactly what's in there and ensure that it's what you need from a Board of Ed perspective to ensure you have the proper hours, the proper cost, the proper safeguards in there to move forward. And what USMH needs now at this point is uh, a coordinated uh, effort that says we know that this MOU is going to be here soon and that we're engaged in uh, supporting an MOU between the Board of Education and USMH given that it meets the needs that we've identified and the specific parameters that we need to see in that MOU. But they need to know that that, uh, that commitment is there, that there's going to be joint use facilities given the proper conditions and tenants and that everyone is engaged in making this move forward quickly. That allows us to continue with architectural work. It allows the developer for the additional uh, urban educational space to continue to support uh, his architect to move forward quickly and in conjunction with the others. And it allows USMH, especially in their October meeting, to uh, have that discussion and continue to support the uh, implementation of their new downtown programs that will benefit the whole project, uh, the Board of Ed, Washington County, City of Hagerstown. Uh, all together. So that's generally an update on the meetings that have occurred, what's happening behind the scenes to make sure this project is moving forward smoothly and quickly, and what's necessary to make sure this project continues to move forward and doesn't hit uh, stumbling blocks because uh, people at different levels perceive, meaning university system, uh, architects, the developers, etc., that uh, there's still something that needs to, a loop that needs to be closed to support the project and make sure it's moving forward smoothly. So that's what we as county government would ask you to uh, consider uh, as you move forward in your deliberations. The MOU that will be out there, uh, support of that MOU and approval of that MOU, not the specific detail, but the fact at this point that there is one and that you intend on engaging uh, given that the MOU says everything you needed to and allow us to move, continue to move forward to make the project happen on the time frame that we see uh, as very lucrative and uh, very uh, positive for all parties involved in the downtown revitalization effort. Thank you. And uh, I will add uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, never before since I've been a county commissioner, and I guess uh, Commissioner Bar could either agree or disagree with me, I've never seen every uh, government entity, every elected official pull together, come together as we have as a group uh, to move a project of this magnitude forward. and. Uh, the only person, in my opinion, that's standing in the way of any progress would be Sarah, uh, Senator Serafini and uh, all the state elected officials uh, moving their contributions but forward. You came. So uh, yes. I just hope we continue the good conversation and good work. And uh, at a minimum, let's take what we've uh, all agreed to and let's get moving forward with at least what we've agreed to up to this point. At least we're going to have something. Too many times these projects have been drawn out and somebody tries to get more than what the other uh, entities are comfortable providing and then it, everything comes to a, a stop. So we've got something good going on here and uh, anytime uh, Baker and Klein agree to a, a major project, you know it's a good deal. So let's get moving forward with it. <laughs> Thank you. President Baker, could yes. I ask mm -hmm. a couple questions? Um, 
And then I'd like to give my colleagues that opportunity certainly as well. I keep hearing the meeting, October meeting. So what does the county see as a timeline for us to review an MOU, have it in say what we feel we need to cover our needs and contingencies and what ifs. What timeline is going to, do we need to have so we can be collaborative in getting some information to the university system? Did you all say one answer? Did you just say, can I ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say, well, you answered all time. <laughs> Very good. Mr. Murray, yes. could you answer the yes. question, please? Uh, Thanks. I, I would say it's uh, multifaceted. I think okay. uh, the first thing that University System of Maryland needs to know is that the Board of Ed is uh, engaged in review of an MOU with the end result of partnering in a way that you share the spaces that were identified. I think that's the first facet knowing that that commitment is there and this project's moving forward based on that premise. Now, obviously, that's only phase one and is contingent on everything else you just said. So, you know, phase two would then be formal approval of the MOU with all the tenants in there that uh, you need to be comfortable that the uh, Board of Ed can move forward with the partnership with USM. So the first one, I think, uh, you know, personally, I think the sooner the better. The commitment to the project, uh, the fact that an MOU is going to be reviewed and the premise of that MOU and the project is the partnership. I think that needs to be formally said. Uh, secondly, then, uh, the, the formal approval of the MOU, obviously uh, that has to go through legal review on your end, USM's end. Uh, obviously, attorneys do things very quickly, so we're comfortable that'll, <laughs> that'll happen. And... <laughs> I see two of them right there. They're, they're lined so, up right so in front of each sure other. Yeah. Say that good word in there. Um, that uh, timeline, I would, I think, I would have to defer to the senator and, uh, and Mr. Halsey and, and ask for more detail on that. I know October the meeting is when uh, the USM is going to be uh, approving some specific things. Uh, I don't know if they intend on having a signed MOU at that point, or would need that, or if they need that formal commitment and know that the signed MOU is working. Greg, I might be able to add something. Yeah, uh, certainly. Mr. Halsey and I have been talking on and off for a long time. Uh, last evening I had uh, the first draft of an MOU that um, this morning I shared with Dr. Michael to look at and with Tony Trotta to look at. So that process is going. We, we've not given something to the board yet because we've not really seen the elements of it. But we, we do, we, it's, well, as I said, I got it last night from Mark, and it took a lot of work for him and a lot of pressure to get the attorneys at USM to authorize his release to me. It's a draft document on both sides of the equation. So um, I, I think, you know, my commitment is to get it to the board as soon as I can for your consideration. And one other I kept hearing, I think you said that you're foreseeing a start date for the universe for um, the Board of Ed portion of this project and the Maryland Theater either December of 2017, January 2018. Correct. That's very it compressed. Is. The, uh, the driving factor of that is completion of design by next July. So once design's complete and it has to go on the street, then there's, you know, whatever, the Maryland Theater and Board of Ed and the requirements for advertisement and blah, blah, blah. You know, so that'll take probably several months, August, September, October, and then award. So that we're uh, later next year for award. Okay. So you're thinking bid documents in late fall of 2017. We're thinking next July of 2017. For the design. Documents. Oh. That's right. Okay. Bid documents okay. complete. That's, that's the schedule the theater is working on. So if you back up from that, that means that we'll be trying to bring something to the board for consideration relative to architectural design development in the not too distant future for you to consider. Um, in addition to that, what, one of the things that might happen to kind of jumpstart the project and create, create some synergy downtown, and of course I'm not, I don't mean to contradict Greg in any way because it all has to come together, but the demolition phase of this might come ahead of the actual letting of the contracts. Very possible. 
Yep. Uh, but again, we'd want to have the synergy of both groups taking full advantage. But that might be a great thing as well. Especially if we can use uh, some sustainable community leverage, which of course City of Edgar Sound sustainable community, to get some of the grants that are available for demolition of you know buildings. That might even help spur that. And then the other keyword I think I heard, if there seems to be a jam up downstate, that there is an opportunity for maybe forward funding, a portion, if we needed to. Yeah, forward funding. If the state commits and says, for example, exactly. uh, you know, July of seventeen out of $5 million, we're going to be able to provide 3.5. And then July of 18, we're going to be able to provide 1.5. I think we would have the discussion as to whether or not uh, you know, the board could forward fund the remainder. And knowing that that commitment was already there from the state, uh, similar to what we've done to other major projects, knowing that the commitment was there to recover those funds. I mean, that's just a matter of cash flow. Mm -hmm. So Understood. that's what I was referencing there. Other questions from the Board of Commissioners, Ed? any comments, questions? I think one of the things we wanted to do is make sure that uh, we had the discussion and know so that uh, you, the Board of Commissioners, everyone, because we had this meeting recently and it was agreed that it was time for us to, you know, give an update to everyone together to make sure you understand where the project stands so that uh, you, as well as the commissioners had a slap on so that you could uh, put that discussion on your agendas and move forward with you know, the goals of completion of uh, the needed uh, items so that the project continues to move forward. Sure. So now you know, with this, we know that USM uh, has an MOU that can be out there for review that's just very new right now, which is great because we had asked can we have something before we have this joint meeting so we have something to actually talk about? Because if not, all we're talking about is, you know, a premise in the future. So now we have that. Uh, we have something that can be reviewed, something we can discuss. The commissioners have something that they can uh, sink their teeth into as far as starting to move the funding forward so that we can use that for things that are necessary for this project. The Board of Ed has uh, information uh, so that you can uh, start considering uh, the commitment of uh, the joint use for the project uh, and then obviously the specific parameters has to uh, follow so that you're comfortable with the MOU. USM has something that says that this is being considered. We have that commitment to the project itself for the joint use. City of Hagerstown knows that they can continue to look at their funding because these projects are moving forward quickly. The architects know and the developers know that these things are moving so they can continue to start paying and working more feverishly on uh, what it takes to accomplish this and the time frame stipulated. Uh, so that they can commit their funds and their time uh, to make this happen and that moves the whole project into you know a different phase from just so conceptual with architects talking and starting to work on things and to here's the deadlines that we need full speed ahead let's make this project happen by the stipulated time frame Thank you. okay any I think just, just just one last comment that I have, and, and that is that you know Senator Serafini has been an excellent resource for us and a tremendous advocate. One of the other things he's done beyond looking for funding is looking for expedited construction ability, um, because as public agencies, there are rules and regulations that we have to comply with. And Senator Serafini, through his work on the task force of 21st century schools, as well as with his connections to Dr. Lever, <coughs> the man formerly known as Dr. Lever. Um, I guess he's still Dr. Lever, just not with us. Um, but he's been, he, a Andrew has been continued to, to work on those kind of things to help us answer a lot of questions that are still out there for us. And so I want to thank you publicly for that work. Okay, anything else to add? Any other comments, questions? I think one of the, the uh, key things of aggregating this into this partnership is the work that had been done by each of the individual agencies prior to this, or else this wouldn't exist at all. Right. And the, uh, you know, when the city looks at downtown revitalization, when the Board of Ed looks at, you know, how do we provide additional resources and opportunity for the kids in Washington County, when the county looks at how do we help fund those type things, and the state looks at how can we support this as, as uh, you know, projects that are, you know, a model statewide. USM looks at how can we further the opportunity in Washington County and tie it in with the kids that we have coming up through the school system now. You know, all of this checks all those boxes. And uh, moving this forward is certainly a tribute to all the work that you've done with the concepts you've put in there previously, not to just 
you know, the county is aggregating this and moving it forward. But without any of that hard work from any of the agencies, specifically the primary <coughs> anchor institutions, yourself being your, you know, one of the primary anchor institutions, this could never happen. So I have to commend you on all the work you've done, not only previously, but what you're doing now to, to help uh, move Washington County forward. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks to everyone, and uh, we'll be meeting soon. Eager, eagerly awaiting uh, Senator Serafini's. Uh, See, it's coming.